Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can I join the Prime Minister in his remarks about the humanitarian disaster we're witnessing in India? I know the UK has already committed some support, but given the scale and gravity of the disaster, I hope the Foreign Secretary will set out today what more the UK will do to help the Indian people in their hour of need. Can I also join the Prime Minister in his remarks about the Post Office case and ongoing um, injustice? Um, and of course, today is International Workers' Memorial Day, and this day, uh, this year, after all the sacrifices our frontline workers have made during the pandemic, it's even more poignant than usual. I join in solidarity with all those mourning loved ones today. Mr Speaker, it was reported this week, including in the Daily Mail, the BBC and ITV, backed up by numerous sources, that at the end of October the Prime Minister said he would rather have, and I quote, bodies pile high than implement another lockdown. Can the Prime Minister tell the House categorically, yes or no, did he make those remarks or remarks to that effect? Prime Minister. No, Mr Speaker, and I think what I think... Uh, the, the right honourable gentleman is a, is a lawyer, I'm given to understand. I think uh, that if he's going to re repeat allegations like that, uh, he should come to this House and substantiate those allegations and say, and say where he heard them and who, who, exactly, who exactly is supposed to have said those. Who exactly is supposed to have said those things, Mr Speaker? Uh, because uh, what I certainly can tell him, uh, and he asked about the October decisions, they were very bitter, very difficult decisions, as they would be for any Prime Minister, Mr Speaker, because no one wants to put this country uh, into a lockdown with all the consequences that means for loss of education, for the damage uh, to people's life chances, to the huge medical backlog that, that it entails. But it was thanks to that lockdown, the tough decision that we took, Mr Speaker, that, that, and thanks to the heroic efforts of the British people, that we have got through to the, this stage in the pandemic where we find ourselves rolling out our vaccine, where we've done 50% of the population, 25% of the adult population have now had two doses, Mr Speaker, and I want to, I, I, lockdowns, lockdowns are miserable, lockdowns are appalling things to have to do, but I, I have to say that I believe that we had absolutely no choice. Well, somebody here isn't telling the truth. The House will have heard the Prime Minister's answer, and I remind him, the Minister of Code says, and I quote, Ministers who knowingly mislead Parliament will be expected to offer their resignation. I'll leave it there for now. Turning to another issue, who, who, there will be further on this, there will be further on this, believe you me, who initially, and Prime Minister, initially is the key word here, who initially paid for the redecoration of his Downing Street flat? Uh, well, uh, Mr Speaker, when it comes to misleading Parliament, he may recollect that it was only a few weeks ago uh, that he said uh, that, he sub he, that he didn't oppose this government, uh, this country staying in the, uh, leaving the European Medicines Agency. The fact that he was then uh, forced to retract and leaving the European Medicines Agency was absolutely invaluable uh, for our vaccine rollout. And actually, it was just last week uh, that, he, that he said that James Dyson, he said that James Dyson was a, a personal friend of mine, uh, a fact that James Dyson was correct. Uh, in the newspaper this morning. Uh, as for, as for the, 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 the latest stuff that he's, uh, that he's bringing up, he should know that I paid for uh, Downing Street refurbishment personally, uh, Mr Speaker, and I, contra I contrast it, uh, I contrast it uh, any, any, any further declaration that I have to uh, make, I will, uh, if, if any, will, I will be advised upon uh, by Lord Guys. But if he talks about housing costs, uh, Mr Speaker, then the people of this country can make their own decision in just eight days' time. Uh, because on average, Labour councils charge you £93 more in Van D, uh, the Conservative councils, and Liberal Democrat councils charge you £120 more. That, I think, is the issue. That, I think, is the issue upon which the British people would like him to focus. Yes, Mr Speaker, normally when people don't want to incriminate themselves, they go, no comment. Let me ask this... Let me give, well, let, let's, let's explore this a bit further, Prime Minister. Let's ask it a different way. Either, this is the initial invoice, Prime Minister, initial invoice, either the taxpayer paid the initial invoice, or it was the Conservative Party, or it was a private donor, or it was the Prime Minister. 
So I'm making it easy for the Prime Minister. It's now multiple choice. There are only four options. It should be easier than fighting the chatty rat, Mr Speaker. So I asked the Prime Minister again, who paid the initial invoice, initial invoice, Prime Minister, for the redecoration of the Prime Minister's flat, the initial invoice? Prime Minister. Uh, Mr Speaker, I've given him the answer, and the answer is I have, I have covered the costs, and I think most people will find it absolutely bizarre. And, uh, of course, there's an electoral commission uh, invest investigating this, and I, I can tell him that I've conformed in full with the Code of Conduct, with uh, and, uh, Minister's Ministerial uh, Code, and uh, I, uh, uh, officials have been kept, uh, uh, have been advising me throughout this whole thing, but I think people will think it absolutely bizarre that he is focusing on this issue. Uh, when what people want to know is uh, what plans the Labour government might have uh, to improve uh, the life of people in this country. And let me tell you, if he talks about housing again, uh, we're helping people uh, on the house. I'd rather not spend taxpayers' money, by the way, like the last Labour government who spent £500,000 uh, of taxpayers' money on the Downing Street flat. I'd rather... I, I, I would, that, yes, they did. Yes, they did, tarting it up. I, I, would much rather, I would much rather help people on the, get on the property ladder, and it's this Conservative government that has built 244,000 homes in the last year, which is a record over 30 years. This is a government that gets on with delivering on the people's priorities while he continually raises, I think, issues that most people would find irrelevant to their concerns. Keir Starmer. Mr Speaker, he talks of priorities. What's he spending his time doing? This is a Prime Minister who, during the pandemic, was nipping out of meetings to choose wallpaper at £840 a roll. A roll. Last week, just last week, he spent his time phoning journalists to moan about his old friend Dominic Cummings. And he's telling the civil service to find out who paid for the redecoration of his flat. The Cabinet Secretary has been asked to investigate who paid for the refurbishments in the flat. Why doesn't the Prime Minister just tell him that would be the end of the investigation? Mr Speaker, it's been widely reported that Lord Brownlow, who just happens to have been given a peerage by the Conservative Party, was asked to donate £58,000 to help repay for the cost of this refurbishment. Can the Prime Minister, if he's so keen to answer, confirm, did Lord Brownlow make that payment for that purpose? Minister. Uh, Mr Speaker, I think I've, I've answered this question uh, several times now, and, and the, ans the answer is that I have covered the costs, I have met the uh, requirements that I've been obliged to meet in full, and uh, I, I, when, it comes to, when it comes to the taxpayer and the costs of Number 10 Downing Street, it was the, Labour, it was the, the previous Labour government, I think Tony Blair racked up a bill of £350,000, and I think what the people of this country want to see is, is minimising uh, taxpayer expense. They want to see a government that's focused on their needs uh, and delivering more homes for the people of this country and cutting council tax, which is what we're doing. And it's on that basis that I think people are going to judge our party on May the 6th. Keir Starmer. Answer the question. That's what the public scream at their televisions every PMQ. Answer the question. The Prime Minister hasn't answered the question. He knows he hasn't answered the question. He never answers the question. The Prime Minister, the Prime Minister will be aware that he's required to declare any benefits that relate to his political activities, including loans or credit arrangements, within 28 days. 28 days, Prime Minister, yes. He will also know that any donation must be recorded in the register of ministers' interests and that under the law any donation of over £500 to a political party must be registered and declared. So the rules are very clear. The Electoral Commission now think that there are reasonable grounds to suspect that an offence or offences may have occurred. That's incredibly serious. Can the Prime Minister tell the House, does he believe that any rules or laws have been broken in relation to the refurbishment of the Prime Minister's flat? Prime Minister. No, I don't, Mr Speaker. What, what, I, what, I, what, I, what I believe has been strained to breaking point is the credulity of the public. Uh, he has half an hour every week uh, to put serious and sensible questions to me about the state of the pandemic, about the vaccine rollout, about what we're doing to support our, our NHS, about what we're doing to fight crime, about what we're doing to bounce back from this uh, pandemic, about the economic recovery, about jobs for the people of this country. And he goes on and on, Mr Speaker, about wallpaper when, as I've told him umpteen times now, I paid for it.
Keir Starmer. Mr Speaker, can I remind the Prime Minister of the Nolan Principles, which are meant to govern the behaviour of those in public office? They are these. Selflessness, integrity, objectivity, accountability, openness, honesty and leadership. Instead, what do we get from this Prime Minister and this Conservative Government? Dodgy contracts, jobs for their mates and cash for access. And who's at the heart of it? The Prime Minister, Major Sleaze, sitting there. Mr Speaker, meanwhile, he talks about priorities. Crime is going up. NHS waiting lists are at record levels and millions of people are worried about their jobs, including Liberty Steel. Mr Speaker, don't the British people deserve a Prime Minister they can trust and a government that is mired in sleaze, cronyism and scandal? Yeah. Mr. Speaker, Mr Speaker, last week he came to this chamber and he attacked me for talking to James Dyson about ventilators, where we're now sending ventilators to help the people of India. And the following day, the following day, Mr Speaker, uh, the Labour front bench said that any Prime Minister in my position would have done exactly the same thing. It wasn't only a few months ago that they were actually attacking Kate Bingham, as it, saying she was a crony when she helped to set up the vaccine task force that delivered millions of vaccines for the people of this country, Mr. Speaker, and helping us to get out of the pandemic. This is a government that is getting on with delivering on the people's priorities. We're rolling out uh, many more nurses, 10,000 more nurses in the NHS now than there were this time last year, 8,771 more police officers on our streets now than there were when I was elected, including tougher sentences, Mr. Speaker, for serious sexual and violent criminals, which he opposed, Mr. Speaker. We're getting on. And by, and by the way, I, I forgot to mention it. I forgot to mention it. Last night, our, our friends in, in, in the European Union voted to approve our Brexit deal, which he, which he opposed, and which enables us not just to take back control of our borders, Mr. Speaker, but to deliver free, which it does, which he fervently opposed, and a, enabling, us, enabling us, amongst other things, to deal with such threats as the European Super League, uh, Mr Speaker, but it enables us to deliver free ports in places like Teesside, and above all, taking back control of our country has allowed us to deliver the fastest vaccine rollout in Europe, as he well knows, Mr Speaker, which would not have been possible, which would not have been possible if we'd stayed in the European Medicines Agency, which he voted for. Mr Speaker, week after week, the people of this country can see the difference between a Labour Party that twists and turns with the wind that thinks of nothing except playing political games, whereas this party gets on with delivering on the people's priorities, and I hope that people will vote Conservative on May the 6th.